So we got a yard machines, eight horse, 26 inch, and it's got an unusual problem. The axle right here is seized, and when you pull the machine forward or back, it doesn't want to go. So we have an issue where something underneath the access panel down under there is binding up. My guess it's something to do with the gears, and it's going to require us to flip this machine up, remove the access panel, and then have a look at what's going on. Okay, so we've drained the oil on this snowblower, and we've removed the 3 8 bolts on the access panel at the bottom here. Here is our model number, just so you guys know. Now you normally don't have to drain the oil to flip these up. It needed an oil change anyway, so we went ahead and drained the oil. This cable right here, which runs up to the right side of your handle, and that lever up there controls your drive. So what happens is when you push on that lever, it puts tension on this cable, which lifts up this plate. Now this plate is always spinning when your engine is running because there's always tension on your drive belt. So we have the drive belt right under there, you guys can see it. So when you push on that lever to engage your drive, it puts tension on this cable, which lifts up this spinning plate, and then again, that transfers power to your friction wheel right here. Now, there's two axles on this. There's the lower axle right here, and that one basically has your friction wheel, and then it has a couple little gears on it, and then we have the axle up top, which has your tires. So essentially, when you engage your drive, again, power transfers from here to the friction wheel, and then from this axle through the gears to this axle up here. So what I'm gonna do is take my socket and remove the bolt, and we're gonna see if we can get this tire and this wheel off of the axle, just so I can free up this uh, bottom axle here. And then by taking those clips off, I should be able to slide things over. And then I should be able to see if uh, we can free that up. And then same thing with the top axle. You know, we're just going to go step by step. And I think it's just a, a case of one of the bearings that uh, is getting seized up. And this should just slide right off. Sometimes they can get seized. But this one, we were able to just slide it right off. So now that our wheel is off, we can get access to our clip. Here's the bearing that goes around that axle. Uh, that could be seized as well, we don't know, so that's why we're taking it all apart. And now that you got your wheels off, now's a great time to go and just clean that up with a wire wheel. There's a washer, there's a plastic spacer, and then there's another washer here with your bushing. And you can see it just pops right in there. Now is also a good time to check your bushings. These are just plastic, sometimes they're made out of brass, but you wanna make sure that they're not out of round that bad and uh, make sure that they don't wobble. This one wobbles a little bit, but it's still okay, so we don't have to replace that. And now that we've pulled our bushing out of the little holder there, the axle on this side has been brought up just slightly, and it's actually enough to go ahead and spin this slowly. So we don't wanna damage anything because it's slightly making contact with the bottom gear. But what this proves is that nothing is seized in here. So if we look here, the axle is spinning. So we know that we're not seized on this gear. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing on this side. And then we'll start working on this bottom axle now that we've identified the problem area. What I've done is gone ahead and popped this little clip off here. Now to do that, you just wanna go in with a standard screwdriver and just give it a little pry up and it should pop right off. Now once you pull this little clip off, you have access to your bearing. And what we can do is just reaching in here with my left hand, I'm gonna just lift the axle up slightly and we're gonna remove this bearing. Now again, it might be seized onto the shaft so you might have to give the axle a little tap, but we can see that our bearing came right off. Now, I know right away that this bearing on the right side of the machine isn't the problem because if I put my finger in here and I spin this, you guys can see this bearing is not seized. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing for this side. Okay, so I now have both bearings off the bottom axle and onto the workbench. This is from the right side, this one's from the left side. And if we take a look at how they spin, you guys can see that the one on the right spins freely. The one on the left though, doesn't. It's got a little bit of binding and there's some grinding in there which isn't good. So we're gonna have to replace the bearing for the cost of the bearings, probably replace them both. Even though this one's okay, there's a slight wobble to it, which is left and right, which is no good. 
So we'll probably end up replacing both of these bearings and there is going to be a stamped number uh, somewhere on this bearing. But if you can't for some reason see that number, I'll get you a part number for both of these bearings. Okay, and now that we have the bearings on either side of this axle off and the clearance now because the bearings are off, the axle has dropped down slightly. What we can do here is just spin the axle by hand. And we can see that the axle is spinning on the friction wheel assembly bearing. So we know that that is now not seized. Okay, so now we've taken off both of our bearings on each side of the bottom axle there. Now it's not seized, which means that there's another problem on our machine here. So on these MTD, gear drive systems here you have two gears on this side this one and that one they're connected and these are on a little bearing that go over top of that shaft and these are supposed to spin freely while this one is connected to the axle you can see me spinning it there now on the bottom axle you're going to have the opposite your left gear here is going to be fixed to the axle and this gear here with the one on the right is supposed to spin freely. Now what you're gonna notice is when I try to spin this, look what happens. It moves about a quarter inch forward and back. Sure enough, the machine only moved about a quarter inch forward and back. So we know that it is the bearing on this gear here that goes onto this shaft that's causing our issue. And this is just caused by uh, improper maintenance, guys. So you wanna be lubricating all of these gears. Uh, but the thing is, you know, if uh, somebody goes in here and lubricates this, you can get oil onto this disc and your friction wheel, which you don't wanna be doing. So the thing to do for preventative maintenance on these machines is go in here and lubricate right inside of here, lubricate right outside of here, go down here, and lubricate all inside of here. You wanna be lubricating those gears and then what you're gonna to wanna to do is take some brake cleaner or some carb cleaner with a rag or oil and grease remover and you wanna wipe this down. But because there was no preventative maintenance on this thing, we now have a seized bearing on that axle gear and uh, we're gonna to have to take this off. So how do we do that? Well, first things first, because we have a bigger gear on this side than we do down here, this is gonna to have to slide over. To do that, we have a little E-clip here. We also have an E-clip over here. So we're gonna to have to pop these clips off and then we'll be able to slide our gear over. And this is also a great time to have a little LED flashlight and a magnet on a stick because that little E-clip popped off and it sprung up, hit here, and then fell in behind. So having a little magnet on a stick allows you to reach in there, grab it, and then you don't have to flip the machine down and find it afterwards. Now we're gonna be pulling this axle out from out of here. The thing is you guys are gonna to wanna to watch because there are keyways on these gears here. So if you're moving your gears left and right, you might have something drop out. Again, that's why I like to use that little magnet on a stick. It's just a lot easier to go in there and pick stuff up. You guys are gonna to have to know the order in which things go. And what I mean by the order of things is we have, let's say out here, we have a washer, we have a plastic spacer, and then on the left side of the machine, you actually have your bushing for your axle on the inside, and then there's an E-clip that's holding that together. Then we have a washer, we have our gear, we have another little washer inside of there, then we have our gear, and then going out here, we have our axle bushing on the outside, plastic spacer, and then a washer. So again, when you guys pull all this stuff out, when you put it back together, you wanna make sure that everything is in the correct order. Now, I'm having some trouble getting this plastic spacer off. It's pretty seized, and again, that's just because of lack of maintenance, lack of lubrication. Whereas this side, it's a little rusty, but this one slid right off. So what I'm using is what I call a tie rod removal tool. And this thing, basically, it allows me to go up in behind over top of the axle and apply a light pressure to the back of that spacer. So this is a very slow process. Again, I'm not trying to damage anything. I'm just trying to go in there and apply a little bit of pressure to that spacer until it starts to come off a little easier. Now I should be able to pull it off by hand right there. And sure enough, I can slide it off now. Okay, so now that our top axle is for the most part free, we want to slide this gear and this gear over slightly so that we can move this gear over and get it off of our key. To do that, again, there's a little E-clip down there, so you're gonna pop that off, and we're gonna go ahead and slide this over to the left 
and that will allow us to slide this gear over and get our key out. So this gear right here, it's not held on by a key. It's basically just uh, got a hex on it, so it holds itself onto the hex shaft without a key. Now we can see that our little bearing has been exposed. So once you get the clip off and you move this bearing over, it will allow you to move this whole axle over to the left, which now gives you enough room up here to move your gear over to get your key out and then we should be ready to pull this whole axle out. With this shaft slid like this, you should be able to get this gear right off without having to remove that upper axle. So here's our gear. Sure enough, there's all sorts of rust coming out of it. And if we look inside of here, we can see that they're just roller bearings and moisture gets in there. And that's it guys, those little rollers in there, they just get seized to the point where they don't move, you know, like the one does a little bit, but again, you guys can see that it only moves about a quarter of an inch forward and back and that's it. So there's our problem. So I'm going to have to order some parts here, uh, mainly those uh, two outer bearings. Now you can pull off the little rubber seal there and uh, clean them out and then pack them full of grease to reuse them but I don't really suggest reusing old bearings. And chances are if you're turning them and you hear little bits and grinding noises, they've just uh, outlasted their life expectancy. And uh, a lot of these parts do have a life expectancy. They're only built to last a certain amount of time. So we're gonna definitely go ahead and replace those two outer bearings. And those part numbers are a 941, 0563. So those are a bearing with uh, retainers on them. So we're going to go ahead and replace both of those. Now as far as those gears with the roller bearings on them, I'm going to show you guys a little trick on how to clean them and try to salvage those bearings if they're so bad to the point where the roller bearings have actually become damaged and it's not just a case of those little rollers in there seizing up then you're gonna have to order a completely new gear. Now there's two part numbers and they're very, very similar guys. So if we look over here, we're gonna see a 917-04025A. Now that's gonna be your upper. You'll notice that the smaller gear is slightly shorter. And then your bottom gear, you're gonna have a 917-04026A. So the 25 is the top and the 26 is the bottom, and you'll notice that the smaller gear there is slightly wider. So again, the 25 is your upper, and the 26 is your lower. Those are quite expensive, so hopefully our little trick here that I'm gonna show you how to do uh, is gonna help us save those bearings because you can't buy them separately, you have to buy the whole piece. And if you do happen to snap one of those little E-rings, because I know sometimes when you go to pull them off, you can bend them, damage them, uh, those part numbers are a 916-0231. So if you needed any of those, I figured I'd include that as well. And as always, guys, links are gonna be in the description down below, so you can always click down there and check out all the part numbers that I've used in this video. Now my little trick to free up all these roller bearings, I have an ultrasonic cleaner, so obviously I'm gonna clean out the solution in there. We're gonna use some hot water with some industrial strength degreaser. And uh, what I'm gonna be doing is putting probably both of these uh, gears inside of the ultrasonic cleaner, let it run, let it blast out all of that rust and all that nasty stuff inside of there. Now, if you're on a budget or you don't have one of these ultrasonic cleaners because they are quite expensive, you can go ahead and use some brake cleaner and spray it in there and then take a rag, push a rag through here and then turn it to get those rollers moving so that you're kind of cleaning as much as you can. Once you get all of that nasty orange rust out of here, then you can go ahead and pack this full of grease. And once you've cleaned that up, then you're going to want to go ahead and clean up this shaft. So again, you can see there's rust all over this shaft. And again, that's because no lubrication got in there. So over time, because this bottom gear is so close to that uh, outer edge of the uh, housing for the snow blower. Basically, there's so much snow that's getting in there. There's a lot of moisture and uh, unfortunately, these roller bearings just dried up. We've also got some new collared bearings in. So uh, we ordered those from Stens. We got two of those to replace the two bearings that needed to be replaced anyways. And we went ahead and cleaned up our gear here. So now our gear spins freely. So essentially we're gonna do the same thing that we did for this one on the top axle. So once you get all your clips removed off of this axle, you can go ahead and start to pull the axle that way. 
just again be mindful that that key is going to drop. Now if you're having a hard time getting the gear off of the shaft because there might be a little bit of rust built up, what you can do is get yourself a little soft blow hammer such as this, put your hand behind the gear like this, and then go on the other side of the axle and give it a tap. Keep tapping it and you should get it to the point where the key comes right out just like that. And remember, the only reason we're doing this, even though this gear still spins, chances are that uh, the grease that they used from the factory has you know, started to wear out and started to push out of those roller bearings. And I don't want the same problem that happened with the lower one to happen on the upper gear as well. So for the time it takes me to pull this axle out and then grease this and then put it back together, since everything's apart already, it's a lot easier to do it now versus me having to do all of this work, put it all back together only to have the same issue happen next year on let's say this upper gear and then have to do it all over again. So again, if you're taking it apart, go ahead and just do it anyways. Here it starts to bind up on all that rust that's built up on the shaft. So unfortunately what I'm going to have to do is take a wire wheel in here just to clean that up. So what I've done here is just move the gears over to the left side because there's no rust you guys can see on that left side but there is a lot of rust on the right side. Okay so even after cleaning that side it's just too pitted to get this gear off. So I've gone ahead and taken the wire wheel to this side so hopefully now I should be able to slide this off with ease and this side is proving to be a little easier than the other side was. So that's it. That's all we need to take off so I can kind of push that back in for now just to hold it in place. But this is the gear that we wanted to get off and these are the bearings in here that we're going to lubricate properly because I can tell there's hardly anything in there. And this is a very dirty job by the way, so prepare to get greasy. So we're just over here at the workbench and this is what I wanted to show you guys. So you see all those nasty bits of grease in there and dirt and rust. So your roller bearings are those cylindrical pieces and then there's all sorts of stuff built up inside of there. We're gonna get all that out because we wanna clean this up. So over the years of this thing moving, it's picked up little bits of dirt and grease and rust and it's all been packed inside of there. A little bit of brake cleaner we're gonna shoot in there clean it up and I'll show you what it looks like once it's clean. So here's what it looks like after a little bit of brake cleaner has been shot through it. You guys can see world of difference. Here's the other side too. We got a couple little hairs from the rag that I was putting through there so I'm gonna just clean that up a bit. So here's a before and then here's an after. You guys can see Huge difference. And I'm going to be using some Motomaster wheel bearing grease because it's specifically designed for roller bearings. Now this stuff is a little thicker so you don't want to be using just like a, an oil because you want the grease to stay into these roller bearings. You don't want it to come out. That's why I'm using roller bearing specific grease. So now after I've laid it in there thick I'm going to take my finger in there and work it into all the rollers or you could go ahead and get yourself a little q-tip if you don't want to get that greasy and go ahead and work that grease into every single little roller that's in there and then I'll show you what it should look like once we're done. So it should look a little something like this when you're done. You want to have a nice coating of grease over top of each one of those rollers and you shouldn't have any problems in the near future. Okay now we're going to go ahead and slide our gear back onto our shaft. Don't forget that it goes gear, washer, gear, then washer, washer, and then your little end bushing. Just wanna make sure you don't forget any of those washers. So now, we should be ready to put all that back together, just like that. And now is an excellent time to go ahead and just clean out your keyway. Make sure there's no burrs on the top of it. You know, sometimes you can get a little burr and it makes the gear going over it a little bit trickier. So, you know, take a file to the top of that, clean out the inside of that keyway, and then we'll go ahead and clean up the shaft one last time to make sure that it's uh, nice and smooth. And then when we're ready to put everything back together, we'll go ahead and grease the entire shaft to make sure that uh, corrosion and rust like we've seen here doesn't happen again. So I've gone ahead and greased this side of the shaft as well as fit in the key and made sure that uh, there was no binding there. I've got this side greased. So now I'm just gonna go in here, get a little bit on my fingers here, put it all over the shaft here so that the gear can slide over nicely. Now you're gonna have to take your key out because it, we have to pass this little washer in here. So I've done that and I'm gonna slide the shaft 
and the keyway spot past where the key goes. And then we're gonna come in here and we're gonna drop the key in. Okay, and once you get your key in, you guys can see it there. Just uh, make sure everything's lined up. Now's a good time to take your bushing so that you can slide it over and get that lined up so that it just kind of situates the axle. And then you can go ahead and start putting your E-rings back into place. And again, you wanna make sure that you had that washer on this side of the keyway because that rests up against the back of this bushing here. So again, you have your bushing, washer, your gear, washer, your gear, another washer, another washer, and then your bushing at the other side. And the bushing on this side, that goes in that way, whereas the bushing on this side goes in this way. So once you have your gear keyed onto the shaft and you have all your washers and bushings in the proper spot, you wanna go ahead and make sure that your axle is lined up to the point where that little groove is, and that's for your E-ring. So that'll let you know that you have equal length on both sides of your machine. And I find the best way to put these in is you hold the outer sides and then just give them a tap with a little hammer and make sure that they're on that shaft and that they're not going anywhere. And now we know that our gear isn't gonna come off the key as long as our axle stays as far to the right as possible. Okay, and same thing for this side. Go ahead and make sure your bushing is in and your washer is there and then go ahead and line up your E-ring with the little groove. I do the same thing, pop that on. Okay, now here's the thing that I'm gonna have to show you guys. So we can see on the left side here that our bushing is all the way pushed in flush and it's sticking out a little on the outside. And if we come over to the right side, you guys can see that it's sticking out a bit. Now, if you stick that bushing in flush, that's actually gonna kick your gears and your axle over to the point where you're not gonna be able to fit your E-ring onto that groove. On this machine, it's meant to stick out like that. I don't know why, but it just is. But now would be a good time to go ahead and take your spacers and just slide them onto the shaft on either side of the machine and then follow that up with your washers. The top axle is now done, it's taken care of. Okay, so here's our lower drive shaft. I've got our gear back on there and I've gone ahead and packed it full of bearing grease. So now when you spin this, you guys can see it spins. It doesn't spin as fast, and that's because there's grease packed in there. So it's actually got a little bit of lubricant in there that's causing it to get a little sticky. So it doesn't spin as fast, whereas before, you know, you'd be able to spin it and it would keep spinning and it would have a slight wobble to it. It's because there was nothing in there. And originally, you couldn't even turn it a quarter of an inch in either direction. So now our problem is solved. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna slide this gear off so that we just have our shaft and our little gear here. What I'm gonna do is same way we took it off. I'm gonna take that gear off. We're gonna come in at an angle. Then I'm gonna get it to the point where the shaft is right about here. I'm gonna line up our gear inside of here, make sure that it's seated into position. And then we're gonna go ahead and slide our shaft through and then we'll get both our bearings installed at the ends. So I'm just gonna take this off and we're just gonna put that out of the way just for now. And we're gonna to have to go in here on an angle. And we're gonna go right in here, just like this. So now comes a good point where you're gonna to wanna to hook up your shifter. So go ahead and give this a little pull and just seat that into there. And then now we can go ahead and pull our axle through, just like this. Line up our gear inside of here. And again, you wanna just give it a roll, just like that, to make sure that the gears and the teeth are seated. And then just go ahead and push your axle through. We can go ahead and get our bearings on, on either end, and then that'll lift up our axle enough to the point where this won't move around as much. Okay, so I got our bearings here. Now, just remember that I might never have to work on this machine ever again, but someone else might have to. So when we're going to put these bearings on, grab yourself a little bit of grease, put it in there, roll it around, and that'll ensure that these bearings never seize to that shaft. And just kind of roll it around until you get your bearing on this end flush with that little groove and we'll go and put an e-ring on it just to hold it into place now on this side you don't want to go in there with the hammer and tap it in like that so i'm just going to take a pair of pliers here and just give it a little squeeze spin it around make sure that it's seated into position and now we know that our axle can't go that way anymore 
because it's got the E-ring in it. And just to uh, clarify, the E-rings for the lower axle here are actually smaller than the ones for the upper axle. So just keep that in mind when you're going to put them on. Okay, same thing for this side. Make sure there's some grease in there. Lift up your gear. You may have to give it a little roll just to make sure that everything is seated because you can see we're a little low. So that means our gear teeth aren't lined up. So what I'm gonna do is just give it a roll just like that until now we're lined up and we should be able to pop that right in just like that and then again a little bit of grease on your e-ring same technique with our plier here we're just going to fit that on hold that in place and then give it a little squeeze down and that's it our axles are now done and we're going to put our tires back on just make sure there's some proper lubrication there and that'll ensure that your tires don't seize to the axle because if you can't get your tires off, you can't get any of this off. Okay, so now I'm going to put our tire back on. You just want to give that a spin until it seats up against your spacer. Same thing with the tire on this side. Make sure you're lined up. And then just give it a spin until it locks in. And now our tires are on. So now we can go ahead and bolt those up. And then we still have an E-ring to put in because again, this gear hasn't been pinned yet. Okay, now I'm just gonna get this last E-ring into position here. And that's installed. So now comes the moment of truth. We get to look at the fruits of our labor. We can see that our axle spins freely as it should. So again, what we're gonna do now is go ahead and grease both shafts. I'm gonna take some lithium grease to these gears. If you use more of a grease, uh, what you'll find is when the gears mesh with each other, uh, you'll find that the grease will become stringy and some of that can get back onto your disc at the bottom there, which you don't want. So again, we're gonna grease everything. Then we're gonna make sure that our shifter linkage works properly. And then once everything's greased, then we'll go ahead and take some oil and grease remover to our disc here. We can go ahead and put our panel back on and then the repair job is complete. Now before we go any further, I also wanted to note that now's a good time to check your drive lever because when you spin this, you want this to spin freely without your friction wheel touching that disc at the bottom. And then when you engage your drive on your lever, on your handle, you shouldn't be able to spin this at all. So if we're spinning this, and engage it, it stops it from spinning. That means that the proper tension is on our cable here. If you have not enough tension, what'll happen is this rubber friction disc will only slightly engage your aluminum disc down here and it'll actually wear it out. If you have it too tight, you could end up snapping this spring at the bottom here or you could snap the cable at the top. So again, now's the perfect time to go ahead and check that. And we can see that we do in fact have the proper amount of tension. Now to grease this shaft, I got a little bit of low temperature grease in a mini grease gun here. And you just take some grease, you get some grease built up onto your finger. Now this stuff is super sticky and kind of tacky. So it's not gonna get stringy and it's not gonna drip down onto our disc down here. Now what you wanna do is just take your finger with a little bit of grease, spread it onto that shaft, and then roll your tire backwards, and then just move your finger back from left to right and kinda of coat that axle. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go up top, we're gonna to shift our shifter over, and then we're gonna grease this side where the friction wheel is currently hiding. So now that we've got it shifted into reverse, same process, go ahead and grease this up. Same thing can be done with this upper shaft here. Again, you just wanna lubricate that. You don't have to worry about anything sliding across this shaft. If anyone else has to work on this machine or do any kind of maintenance in the bottom end here and they have to slide a gear off, instead of running into the problem that we did where the shaft was all pitted, now it should be protected with a nice fine layer of grease. So now's a good time to come up to the front of your machine and shift it from reverse into forward. Make sure that it goes left and right, nice and smooth, which we can see it does. So now we can move on to degreasing that disc. And to do that, I'll be using some Refinishers Select. It's a silicone and wax grease remover. So I'm gonna put a little bit of this on a rag and we're gonna wipe it down, clean that up. Now, before we degrease that, I'm gonna be using a scotch pad. And basically this is uh, gritty enough that it'll just take some of the rubber that's built up on this disc off. 
So you just want to go in there, just kind of rough it up, but we can see that already it's starting to clean that up. Move your shifter to the other side, clean that disc up real nice, and then we'll go ahead and hit it with some oil and grease remover. And this stuff, I don't know, you should probably be wearing gloves because anytime I use it, it always makes your fingers go white because it literally sucks all the oil and grease that's on your fingers. It is pretty powerful, but it does a wicked job. You guys can see right there. So that's a clear indication of how much stuff was built up on that. And that's it. We are now ready to put our access panel back on. Now there's four bolts on this model. So before I put them on, I'm gonna be using some Permatex nickel anti-seize on those four bolts because they are known to seize and the reason for that should be quite obvious. The access panel is down here on the bottom and the bolts are going into these four holes here. And any snow that gets inside of the transmission housing at the back here, when it melts, it all drips down to the bottom access panel. So again, a little bit of nickel anti-seize on all of our bolts and they should come out easy the next time they have to come off. And here's proof of that. You guys can see that's all dirt and water and nasty stuff. So I'm gonna go in here and clean that out with a bristle brush before I put that on. And to clean that up, I'm just gonna be using a little bit of spray nine. We're gonna spray it on there, take it off with a bristle brush, should come out nice and clean. So a little bit of degreaser, that thing's good as new. Now you might say, why did I clean that? And the answer is simple. One, uh, just looks a little better. But two, if I ever remove this next year or the year after for inspection, when I do an oil change on his equipment and I notice some metal shavings or possibly some oil buildup. It gives you a good indication of how the machine is doing because you have to remember that a lot of people aren't gonna check their own oil. That's why a lot of my customers rely on Eliminator Performance to do oil changes and maintenance and just do a general inspection of their machine and you'll be able to diagnose issues that you may or may not have just by looking at the inside of that access panel. Now, before I flip this machine down to put some oil into it, I'm gonna be shining up the tires. If you wanna see how I shine up my tires, you can check out that video on the top right of your screen right now. So if you follow the steps in that video, you'll be able to get your tires looking fresh again. So after all of that, we now have a snow blower that moves forward and back, and that's it. Our repair job on this snowblower is now complete. We got some fresh 5W30 oil in this thing too. So now it's ready to be returned back to our customer. So if you guys enjoyed the video, think about leaving me a thumbs up. You know, it really helps me out. You can click here to subscribe and you can click over here to watch one of my previous videos. I upload every single week. So be sure to come on back next week and check out what we got new on the channel. And as always guys, thanks for watching.